for doing this beautiful watercolor there. Okay, please stop. And um, first we're gonna break down the basic shapes. Um, so you see the bear is very round. So you have round head, he's got cute round ears. And even though his body's kind of like jagged, you can see he's got like big round lumpy features. So we're gonna break him down into all circles. And I'm gonna draw him kind of low to the ground because I really like this uh, very um, loose background. I'm start with a circle. And I'm drawing really light because I wanna be able to erase it after. A little small. I want to fit the body in there. Okay, we're going to make a bigger circle next to it. And then a medium circle next to it. So see it kind of goes up and then down again. All right. And we've got two little circles on each side for the ears. Right now it looks like a little bug thing. We've got a circle for the muzzle. And then we're going to build out the lower body. Uh, the legs are very thick, so down, 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 down. and again. This one's so this one kind of is curving in because he's walking along. So starting here. So you can see better. Like a little football shape right here. And then down. And then down. Mm 
So before we grab our head, it's going to be our back. Got two legs. Okay. Do the back legs now. Down. Curve. See it kind of curve. Down. Down. Curve. And down. You're going too fast. I'm going too fast. I'm sorry. Oh, uh. I'll go over it again one more time for this round, okay? okay. In the last leg, we're gonna mimic this leg shape where it's curved. So. So that's our basic shape of our bear. I'll go over it one more time before we clean this up, okay? Yeah. Okay, so one more time. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with a circle. Then next to it, a bigger circle. And then next to that one, a medium circle. And it's going to go down. And then we have two teeny tiny circles next to our front tiny circle. So one, two. And we have an oval here for the mouth, for the muzzle. And then we're gonna curve down here for the bottom part of the bear for his tummy. All right. So we have these basic shapes. Now we're going to get more complicated with the legs. So our legs, we're going to curve down, almost like a loose S. Curve down, and then plant a foot right there. And it's a really thick leg. They're not like tiny, thin horse legs, big, thick, bare legs. First down. We have our leg. And our bear is walking along. So this leg is turned in. So it's going to come down, go up. So it's kind of like a, uh, like a football shape here. And here's the elbow, this pointy part. Down, move into a point, move up, and then it connects. Then our back legs, they mimic the shape of each other. So we're going to curve down. 
And down to your foot. And then it comes up underneath that, uh, that medium circle that we started with. So it goes up and down. And then the back leg that's peeping out behind, we're just gonna do that same shape. Curve down and there. And then you might see a little bit of a foot peeking out. We have a little tiny tail. That's basically where. Okay, so that's our basic shapes. Now we're gonna flesh out our basic shapes to make it look more like a bear. Okay. So first we're gonna connect our two circles. It kind of slopes down here, right? So it's gonna go And then he's got a really thick neck. So he's going to curve all here. I'm going to can it so I'm going to okay. They don't have a very slender neck like people. They have a very thick neck. All right. And then the head, kind of make a little divot. Let me zoom in to see better. Almost kind of like a little heart shape. See? And then fall down here. And with our oval, I'm going to cut into it to make it more straight. Down. And then connect it more here. Okay. And then this circle is a little more pointy. Okay. And then, of course, we need a nose. So we're not gonna put our nose directly in the middle unless you want your bear to look more at you. We're gonna put our nose more to the side. Okay, so now this oval We're just kind of straightening things out. Just taking like straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. And for the eyes, just for now, we're just going to make two tiny little circles. One and two. And now he looks so cute, like a little teddy bear. Ears. So we've got our basic little circles, right? We're going to kind of mimic that shape for the insides. There we go. Following our shapes. I'm going to use my eraser on some spots too. So for our uh, this leg, just going to follow the shape. Follow it through, and then we could erase our underline. And 
seeing any other one. I think I can bring his butt down a bit. That's why we draw light. So not only can we erase our underdrawing, but if we make any mistakes, we can fix them easier. So that's a pretty good fair. I'm just going to erase my outer lines and clean up anything that I don't like. Would you like me to go over it one more time with our second bear? Did, did anybody need more? Uh, need me to go over it one more time? I need you to put the um, one that you were cleaning up back up, please. Oh, yeah. All my little lines. Um, I want to make sure my bear. I want to make sure my bear isn't floating. So I want my legs or my feet to all kind of end up on the same, um, the same level, right? So this leg could be a little longer. I always think that bear's feet just look wrong. Like the, the Bernstein bear books, their, bear, their feet look very realistic, I guess, to bears. At least the feet do, even though they're a cartoon. But they just look weird to me. <laughs> like they look like slippers. Maybe because we don't see bears in the game. And then for our eyes, if you're at this stage and if you want to clean up your, make your eyes look a little more realistic, um, we're just going to make them a little more almond shape. So I just went over one line and another line. All right. All right, I'm going to quickly uh, clean this one up, too. What did you do to the eyes, Cecile? Oh, I just... Can you zoom in on them for me? Yeah. I just made them a little more almond shape compared to the uh, original circle shapes. Thank you. I'm just doing the second one quickly just because um, when we get to our background, I'd like to show like options. And you're fast and we're slow. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> I'll try to slow down. Oh, 
I'm having trouble with the muzzle. Muzzle? Mm -hmm. uh, so with or the muzzle. Do you want me to? Maybe zoom in on it. Maybe zoom in. Okay. So for the muzzle, I started with a nose shape and then I kind of just started making straight lines to give it more structure. So. I think I know what my problem is. I think my head tilt is a little different than yours. Oh, okay. So uh, maybe I draw the muzzle more straight forward. Hmm, okay. Or like in the center. Yeah. Okay. And you see mine? I've drawn I've drawn it straight forward. Let me, let me see. Stop sharing. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, it still looks fugly. What should I do? Make it go <laughs> side. Uh I would bring it down more like instead of drawing the um little muzzle the, the the lip i would bring it down more to like a small is the head too small for the body should i make the whole head bigger no i don't think the head's too small um i would bring no oh, oh, no it's he it's sort of like up on top of this muzzle instead of down at the end. So it makes yeah. it look like a, a little bulldog. bulldog. Use an oval for the... I did, but then it it looked... I had the oval going like that, like Cecile's. And then I... Uh -oh. Eric, I did, and then it looks like, the, like a cherry falling off the tree down there. Well, erase that whole thing. And you have to look at yours. See how terrible that is. <laughs> Gosh, I can't get them freaking muzzle. I uh, point his nose left. That's why I wish we were in studio. You know what I'm saying, Kristen? Yep. But yep. Nothing. I tell you, Cecile. Good luck. <laughs> point it left. But look at her. Cecile's hers is just right under the eye, Kristen. But it's pointing left. Show yeah. us yours again. Yeah, let me get to mine again. I'm going to share mine again. So I re I did it kind of in your position, and I think it would be better if you had your nose lower down here. Um, here's mine. So. So that'll work if you want yours in the front to look like that. You just have to make a, a oval that's straight down with the nose. But now slide it away and show her yours too, so she can see both. They both work. So mine's more of a three quarter view. It looks like yours is more of like a straight on. Oh yeah, that's better. Give them bigger ears. Okay, so once we're here, we're gonna get started painting the bear.
And we're gonna do the background last because the background is just very loose and it's a lot of um, like putting a bunch of color on there and it'll probably take a while to dry. So best to just leave that for last. Once you're done here, you want to make sure everything's clean. And uh, for our bear, I'm going to zoom out. That's okay. Our bear, there's a lot of um, different light hitting it. So there's lots of lights, there's darks. Um, and depending on where the light's hitting it, it's a brown bear, but it's getting a lot of different shades of brown. So um, I'm going to start making one brown. And then every once in a while, maybe we'll add a little bit more yellow or a little bit more red just to make a different brown, just to kind of play with it and add kind of drop color in. Almost like a wet on wet technique, but I don't want it to be like crazy and um, I don't, I want to have some control. All right, so I'm going to bring my paint up here. And I'm going to be mixing my browns, but if you have a brown or if you have umber, um, you're more than welcome to use it. I would definitely still add something else to it, either like a more, more yellow, a little bit more blue, a little bit more red, just to kind of play with different browns. Um, but I'm gonna be mixing my brown because I know that not everybody has brown. Okay. I'm just okay. gonna use my crayons. Okay, sounds like a plan. I can't wait to see it. So are you gonna go from dark to light or light to dark? I want to go, uh, I think I'm going to start with light just so I can get a color down and then drop in some darks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to make like a shadow color and then go over it this time just because um, my reference, I really liked that loose watercolor look. That it had. Open up these windows so you can see the colors better. There we go. Natural light. So there's like more golds, there's more reds. Um, I did put a lot of blues in these darker shadows. So I'm going to mix myself a brown. And I'm going to put it here. I'm just going to cover it so I don't want to get paint on my baby. There we go. All right. So to mix a brown, all we need is red. Off my brush and blue and yellow. This might end up looking green. I don't know. Let's we'll see. Put a lot of blue in there. Yeah, this looks green. So that means I need more red. There we go, that's more brown. So I can start with this brown. Okay. 
I'm going to test it first. All right, that'll work. That'll do. That's that's really a yellow brown. Is that what you want us to do? Um, you can start with a yellow brown. Um, I'm going to be mixing a lot of different browns. So you can have more reddish brown if you want. Um, I'll mix like This is a pretty reddish brown. I'm just going to be dropping in a lot of different browns, so I'm not too worried about which brown I start with first. So here's a couple of different browns. There he is. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and start to pull in right there. I'm going to just purposely not fill in some areas because I do want to add different browns to it. I want it to be kind of loose. So if you want, you could, if you don't want to mess up all this brown, you can pick up a brown and move it to the side. And then mix maybe more yellow into it or red or blue or black or another brown. Yeah. I don't really see on the screen, but it is different. Um, red. So I'm just playing around with my colors. And if it ends up turning green or near black, that means that you need to add either more, uh, more red or more yellow. If it looks black, it means there's probably too much blue in it. You can go with just plain water and spread it around if you want. It wants to be very loose. For this first round. If you don't have a gel pen, um, try your best not to paint over your eyes. And with your nose, try your best to leave a little um, light for your nose. 
If you do have a gel pen, don't worry about it. You can just paint all over it. And I went outside the lines. That's okay because when we go over with our loose background, we could probably go over it with a darker color. Um, if you want to save highlights, you can by wiping out your water with your brush. And gliding across. Save so highlight. Do that, or there's a way to do it when your paint is dry that's really useful. I can show you how to do that too after this dries. So I have to let this dry and I'm going to start um, mixing a darker brown. So again, red, yellow, blue. Um, this time it's going to have a little bit more blue. Uh, take your time with this. It's okay. We have to wait for this to dry before we put a shadow on top, but this just gives us time to mess around with colors and see um, which one we want to use and practice our browns because I know that making brown is difficult or it takes practice. I wouldn't say it's difficult. It just takes a lot of practice. Uh, so I'm going to go over one more time how to make brown and then how to make a darker brown. So to make brown, we need a red. We need yellow. We need blue. Mix it up. We need a brown. This is just my little extra bear that I did. So I'm just going to fill it in. There we go. It's a baby bear. Okay. And then to make a darker brown, we're just gonna go, we're just gonna add a little bit of blue at a time. You don't want to add a lot of blue at once because then you're gonna end up with a black or green. If you have um if you have a dark brown, like a an umber. Or if you have black, that's another easier way to make a darker brown. Um, it's just like a foolproof way where you're not worrying about ending up with a green bear. 
but if you don't have black or um, a brown, this works. Using my baby bear as an example. So that's a darker brown. Add a little bit more. See, that's, that's really good for like a, um, a shadow. All right, so I'm gonna mix a bigger puddle of that. Slowly add. I need more red. It looks green to me. Let's make sure there. Yeah, that's kind of green. So that means I need more red. That's a good, that's enough. All right, so I'm gonna touch my bear. It's drying a little bit. It's okay if it's a little damp. It just can't be sopping wet. You don't want the paint to screw it all over. It's okay if it's a little loose though. All right, so I'm gonna start painting in shadows. And I'm painting anywhere that I think the light isn't going to be touching him. So it's probably not going to hit underneath his head. Um, you want the legs that are behind him to read like they're not, you know. I want this one to come forward. So I'm going to have it come forward. Once this dries, I'm going to do another layer on the one behind it. So 
this one gets pushed back more. Head to kind of pop out, so I'm going to add some shadowy colors behind it. And if you don't want these harsh lines, you clean your brush so it's just water. And you can come up, just touch it, and then it softens it. So again, a clean brush, so it's just water. I'm just going to come up to my wet paint. And it softens that. That's pretty wet. I'm going to do the shadows on the face. That's really going to bring in the um, structure. I'm going to try to just hold it so it doesn't get wet. Okay, so I've got my paintbrush. I filled it up. Start right down the middle. Okay. Start right down the middle on each side of the muzzle. This is darker. Oh. I'm already done. I know. You're already done? Yeah. Yes. Oh. I don't want Hi. to share. I don't want to share yet. You don't want to share yet? Okay. I'm just going to listen to to some songs. Okay, make sure to use headphones so we can't hear it, okay? Wait. Either I am I am using or mute yourself. my iPad still, so I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Sounds like a plan. And then and then go to another app. Okay. And then you're going to share at the end? Yeah. All right, sounds like a plan. You see, I'm uh, kind of it's almost like contouring. Like, you want to like have I don't wear makeup, so this is theory, but I know that you want to put like contour shading near like your cheekbones, and some people do like the sides of their nose. So basically contouring a bear. And the inside of the bear's ears isn't getting sunlight. And then between the eyes. Eyebrows. Little bare eyebrows. It's not really eyebrows, it's just where the shadow is hitting it, but they look like eyebrows. Okay. And I covered the nose just so it wouldn't bother me, so I'm going to cover it with black anyway. 
I wanted it to be like a darker color so it wouldn't stick out weird. Alright, so I'm just going to zoom out. And then we could soften this too again, the same way we did here with just clean water. Just going to come up and touch it. And then boom, soft lines. Again, just clean water, no paint. Come up here, touch it. And boom, soft. And I'm going to soften this one up. And it's important to clean your brush every time you do this because eventually your brush is going to fill up with paint and then you're just going to be moving paint around. We don't want to do that. We're just trying to soften up our lines before they get, before they dry. So now I'm waiting for my bear to dry. Um, letting it do its thing. It's kind of puddling here, but that's okay. I like that. Um, I'm going to let that dry. And I'm actually going to share in the chat a link uh, to another YouTube video. Um, I have two of them. And I'm going to... Yeah, I could share both. They're very short. I think they're like about three minutes each one. Um, the first one is a collection of bears breaking into things. I thought it was funny. It's also terrifying, but mostly funny. And the second one is um, a bear dance from uh, a Native American woman in Canada, and they use bear skins, like with a whole head as like a headdress to dance. And they dance like bears, like they'll scoop, like they're scooping up salmon and they'll like put their hands up, like they're like chasing butterflies. It's very interesting. So I'm gonna share those links in the chat. If you're using a device that's from your school, I know that they limit what you can look up, so it might not work, but um, I think if you look it up on like a phone, you look on the chat from like a phone or something that isn't from your school, it should pop up. Otherwise, it's just gonna say that it's, uh, it's blocked. All right, so I'm going to share So the first one I shared is the bear breaking into things. doing? Is everyone uh, painting okay? Mixing your browns all right? Okay. 
it's getting there. <laughs> I mean, it's getting somewhere. Oh, oh, cancel, cancel. Ooh. Oh, good. I'm glad it works. I didn't hear any profanity in the, the bear breaking in episode, but I could have missed it. it. It was breaking into people's houses and cars. They're very persistent and smart. And That's strong. Yeah. Sorry? Strong. I went on a camping trip up in the, just up Highway 4, and uh, we were sitting around our fire. We heard this clunk, and I went, and he had ripped off my door of my car. <gasps> it was very scary. We didn't really see the bear, but we sort of looked at that and went, we're not camping here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's go home. <laughs> oh, no. In Yosemite, you always tie your stuff up in the trees or it's not there in the morning. That oh. is what's so true. So true. Um, I was supposed to go camp up north uh, a few weeks ago. I ended up, I was supposed to go on a road trip and go to different places to see my friends. And um, the second part of the trip got canceled, but originally we were supposed to go up there and I bought a huge, it's called a bear keg. It's basically like a bear proof container where they can't get a hold on to it. And you're supposed to put it far away enough from your campsite. So if they do go and get it, it they're not going near your tent. So I, I'm happy I didn't have to use it, but. <laughs> Uh, most bear, most state parks have bear bins that you can lock your food in. I know. I was looking like this was a trip I had been planning for almost a year, and um, at the time, a lot of places were still closed with COVID, so it was hard finding one a campsite in general, and then two a campsite that did have a bear box. At the very last minute, I found two campsites that did have bear boxes, but I had already gotten the bear keg. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, I've got this really expensive Tupperware basically, but. <laughs> well, word to the wise, don't, when you're putting everything away to be safe, put mm -hmm. your car keys in there. Because mm -hmm. there was some petty in the, in the Campy spot right next to us, and the bear came and took away her whole container where she had her food. Okay, that's a big loss, but yeah. her car keys were in it too. Oh no! I remember. I remember re, um, listening to this podcast about backpacking because I was really I was getting ready. I was like, "Oh, the wilderness." And this girl was like, yeah, keep your keys on you at all times, even if it's like a multi-day trip, yeah. because you never know what's going to happen to your bag. <laughs> It'd be down the river if, if you fall uh -huh. in the river. <laughs> so, that had to be canceled, but hopefully next time. And then I'll come back and watch the bear story. <laughs> yeah. Just be and sure to come another, back. <laughs> another thing, if you're a woman, you got to be careful certain times. Well, there's two, there's two uh, uses for bear spray then. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. I bought that too. 
a big can of just air spray. Good. All right, so I'm touching my bear. It's a little wet still, but I think I can add some shadows on top of it again. Um, I have enough brown left, thankfully. And I'm just gonna go over it. I'm gonna actually mix some more. It's getting kind of And then I'm going to darken this one because it's turned underneath, so the sun's not going to hit underneath your paw. Go over. I think I'm going to add a little bit more red. Yeah. It's brighter. So I'm just going to mix another bit of brown. Red. Okay. dry again and now I'm going to make a black because I want to make a black for the nose and I guess the little tiny eyeballs. So black, we're going to mix um, An easy black to make is the blue and brown. If you don't have brown, you could just make a brown and just continue to add blue until you get this 
dark murky color that'll read as black. So I'll start with a clean slate just so you can see how to make it. Or if you have black paint, that's great. You can use black paint. Yeah, so strong. They want to draw colors. They are. Yep, yep, yep. With a cat emoji. Oh, that's so cute. Aha. Layers. It just yeah. gets better and better. That's why we paint it forever. <laughs> And it's always important to um, test your colors too, because it could look completely wrong. Oh, I'm getting my face. A little creepy. It could look completely wrong or a completely different color on your palette, and then we'll test it on your paper and it might work. So it's getting there. It's a little green, so I think we need more uh, red. That'll work. I have to do a couple layers with that, but that'll work. Again, if you have black, you could use black. Touching. My face is pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in the face. And I'm going to switch to a smaller brush just as I uh, be as precise as I can with the eyes. Again, if you have a gel pen, you can just paint the entire eye and then just draw back in the whites of the eyes. That's what I did with the original. Um, for this time, though, I'm going to try to try to keep the, uh, the lighter color. Well, so not to do well. Oh, no. There we go. All right. So we've got that. Okay. And once we have our blacks, once you're at this point, you're letting this dry and you're also painting, you're also mixing different um, greens. Uh, you could also use browns. I even, if you look close on my original, there's even some reds in there. Um, we're just going to make like a very loose, squishy background. You don't have to do 
um, as loose as that. You can do a bunch of trees. Uh, you can do a galaxy colors if you want. Maybe it's a bear that's traveling at night. That'd be kind of cool. So while letting that dry, I'm just taking my time. I'm gonna wipe this out. And I'm gonna mix a couple of different greens. So maybe I'm gonna mix blue greens, dark greens, emerald greens, lime greens, all the greens. Okay. You can even make your greens darker by adding red to them. Um, if you look on, I wish I had my example with me, but if you look on the color wheel, you, you can see that uh, red and green are complementary colors. Uh, that's probably why when you think of red and green, you think of Christmas because that's just a designer looked at that and was like, oh yeah, I could sell things. <laughs> I'll put Christmas stuff together and they're going to sell. <laughs> um, they do that with a lot of different, um, a lot of different complementary colors like uh, purple and yellow. You think of the Lakers, those are complementary colors. They look good together so that it looks good on a jersey. Here's an example. I'm going to make green. Then I'm just going to put some red. Some red on my brush. Mix it in there. I need a darker green. They look good together, separate, and then when you mix them together, they end up turning into like a, a shade of brown. So you can mix brown like a bunch of different ways. All right. So I've got a couple different greens. This one's more like a, like a bluish green. Got this dark green. I could even pop in just like straight up blue or straight up yellow if I want. I'm gonna check here. His nose is still wet. That's fine. I'll just be careful not to get that part wet immediately. Okay. Uh, so for your background, you could be as loose as this. You could put in trees. Um, I'm going to go over how to paint a few different types of trees real quick. You don't have to do these, but I'm just giving you guys ideas. So for a tree, if you wanted to put in a tree, an easy way to do it, um, the way that Bob Ross actually paints his trees, 
We've done these before. We'll start with a line going straight down. And then he usually uses a big fan brush because he only works in um, oil paints, but it works with our watercolor brushes too. So you're going to do something that's called um, stippling, stippling, and you're just going to go. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Oh. And it gives like that uh, that random effect. That random effect that nature gives. It doesn't look like a perfect Christmas tree shape. Um, another way is this different type of pine tree. You can same deal, start with a line that goes straight down. And then it's a pretty little bit thinner. Oh well. Then you go swoop and then and then swoop. And you don't want them to be perfect. You don't want them to be like perfect little feathers. Swoop. You want them to look a little messy. You can add a little free edit bits at the top. So that's what I did with this one, is it kind of peeps out. And then eventually you're gonna end up with more bushes and trees. So you could end up just adding in color at the bottom too if you want. Okay. So you see I added a little Bob Ross tree, added a little wispy tree, and then added just a blob. And that could be just thick brush. Um, I just like the positive negative shape where it brings him up more because it's darker. Um, all right. So I've got my grays. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in a couple different trees. I'm gonna switch to a thinner brush because I really want my trees to be thin. Again, going straight down, starting with a stick. You can kind of plan where you're gonna put your trees at this point if you want, instead of finishing a whole tree and then drawing the next line, you can plan out your trees. A small one here. And then I think I'm just gonna copy my original and have this be loose. Okay. So I'm going to do the Bob Ross tree here. So I'm going to go down and go just run tap, 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 all the way down. And I'm actually going to switch to my bigger brush just because it'll hold more paint. Teddy, I'll give you a carrot in a minute. <laughs> Say hi, Teddy. No, it's not a carrot. <laughs>
and then I'm going to do the other kind of um, evergreen trees, pine trees right here. And I'll put the little wispies at the top. And then And then down here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just, I could, while your trees are still wet, you can even add color and it will mix in. Uh, for the, the, the big block of color, I'm just gonna that color and I'm gonna place it down. And while I'm doing it, if I'm running low on green, I'll just mix a different green. It doesn't have to be the same green. It actually will look better when it's not the same green. You could even add um, just plain water in some areas and just let it kind of mill out. And the more random, the better. Um, I really like that loose watercolor look. So the less blended and overworked, I personally think is really pretty. Um, this is a chance for me to clean up my um, little areas where I went over the line. <coughs> Close to the ground. I wanted to add a little bit of red, I could. Just to Some yellow, drop it in because why not? It'll look cool. We drop in some blues. My whites of my eyes still didn't stay. So you can go, if you, if you accidentally paint it over where your whites of your eyes should be, you could either use gel pen, like I said, or if you have white paint, like white acrylic paint, that works too with a tiny brush. Mine. Put 
Highlight on the nose. And then boom, we're done. Oh, we're not. There we are. Chat. Have ever put chocolate in water and melt it and use it for paint? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I have not. Uh, that sounds very sticky and that's how you get ants. <laughs> um, there are people that do paint with, uh, with food though. I painted a cat with wine once um, the owner's, the owner named her cat Merlot, like the, the wine. So for Christmas, I painted her cat using Merlot wine. <laughs> um, people have used, I've seen coffee. I haven't seen chocolate yet, though. I'm sure it's a thing, but not a common thing. <laughs> Do you know those crazy shirts? There's they they make different crazy shirts that smell like coffee or chocolate or beer. <laughs> smell like it? Uh, and even though you wash them, they still hold that smell. It's amazing. That's interesting. I've seen the teddy bears that smell like chocolate for like Valentine's Day. Uh-huh. I haven't seen those. Oh, I have. Working at Safeway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my husband works in Safeway. They're, they're a pretty good company. I like them. I'm in the flower department, so I get to get my creativity out. <laughs> yep. All right. So uh, once you're done, make sure to sign your piece. Uh, I think we're over our time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're <laughs> over. Uh, so... Um, would you, if you guys want to share, you can. Uh, if you need to go, I understand. Does anybody want to share? I want to see Kristen's. I want to see Fousey. She's been done forever. I want to see Fousey's. Oh, nice. Hey, pretty wow. good. Wow. Crayons work. <laughs> Who knew? I did a class last night on cube. Cubanism. I thought it was going to be art from Cuba. But <laughs> it was not. And you are quite the little artist there. Beautiful. Good job. Cubanism, yeah. like that. Very nice. Does anybody else want to share? I know we just painted a big puddle, so I know it's difficult. Oh, oh, who's this? Yeah, I, I should have had. Whoa, more who's that? Oh, that's Stephanie. Uh huh. I should have had. I should have left more white on the bear, like you did, to give it more change. But I had fun. Thank you, Cecilia. Love it. And the and the face is directly on, and it looks great. Yeah. Well, thanks to you and six, seven, eight tries. <laughs> Calista, let's see Calista's. Calista, that is beautiful. Beautiful. Wait, pin, pin that girl. Can you oh, spotlight well, her? That's what I wanted to do. Not so much. She has different shades in there. Nice. Good job. Oh, and here we have wow. Stephanie. Wow. Uh -oh. Oh, excellent. Good job, Stephanie. Really nice. A lot more than mine. <laughs> nice proportions, too. Oh. Um, okay, Cecily, you ought to be able to spotlight that so they'll put the um, showing person in the front of everybody. Oh, I thought I was. Oh. Well, I, I pinned them to get them to do that. Oh, okay. Wow, so oh, here's Kristen. Good. Oh, 
Oh, if I don't come up in the center, you should be able to all just pin me yourself. I'm okay. Oh, there. Oh, no, no, I got Sisu. Oh, uh, hold on. Oh, did I do anything? I'm still looking at Callista on mine. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to enlarge you, Krista. Go up in, to the top of mine and say replace pin on my picture. Uh, uh, spotlight for everyone. There. Hey, here we go. Yay. No, I still don't have. Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, there. Good. Oh, oh Krista. Beautiful. Dang, there. Krista. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I got yeah. some color this time. <laughs> yeah, I love this fit, fit. Fit. I got fun. too much. I got to back it off. <laughs> thank you, Cecily. Yes, thank you, Cecily. Thank you.